Hello and welcome to Roundtable. For almost 50 years, one name in France has been linked to the far right, Le Pen. Well, now there's a new one to add, Zemmour, Eric Zemmour. And he stands a chance of making next year's presidential race the most divisive in generations. Eric Zemmour has been called a French Donald Trump, appealing to extreme elements in society. He has convictions for inciting racial hatred. What is it then that makes people talk of a man with no party and no election experience as a future leader of the country? Good to have your company. I'm David Foster. So, no party, no election experience. But it's worth remembering that a certain Emmanuel Macron had no party himself until he founded one to help him on his way to the Elysee Palace. So do not dismiss Zamor as a rank outsider. Who is he anyway? Eric Zamor is a French far-right author and television pundit who's rising fast in opinion polls as to who will be the next French president. 63-year-old Zamor is widely known for his controversial rhetoric, such as his call to ban the name Mohammed, his call for France to leave the European Union, and his warning of what he calls a war of races due to immigration. The divisive commentator was convicted of inciting racism in 2011 and 2018, but his popularity appears to be rocketing. He recently overtook the far-right candidate Marine Le Pen in opinion polls, and some analysts say he could take 45% of the vote against the centrist Emmanuel Macron if he gets to the second round next year. Zemmour has not yet officially confirmed his candidacy, and with six months to go until the first round of the election, could the inflammatory TV star eventually become president? Well, allow me then to welcome to the studio Nabila Ramdani, French-Algerian journalist, and Joseph Downing, an expert in French politics and security who works at Aston University. And we go to Paris, where we see Jean-Christophe Barr, who is chief executive of an organization called Connectors for Peace. Uh, Jean-Christophe, since your organization has such an obvious aim, putting people together for peaceful reasons, what do you make of a character like Eric Zemmour? Well, first, uh, uh, David, thanks a lot for having me. Um, I think, you know, the, the Zemmour phenomenon um, shows very clearly that the dividing line in the French politics, as it is in many other countries, but maybe even more in France, the dividing line is no longer between the right and the left or between the social democrat and the conservative. But the dividing line is between, um, let's say, the globalist and the localist or uh, what David Goodhart calls um, the anywhere and the somewhere. And I think this is something that has been underestimated. Uh, but we see now that uh, the right and the left have disappeared and that the debate now is entirely focalized, uh, polarized on this gap or this dividing line between those who have a global perspective and those who are deeply rooted in culture and identity and traditions. So what do you think Eric Zamour is actually capitalizing on within French society? Which particular element? Well, of course, I mean, there's a feeling of uh, a fear, but... You know, there's a bit of a paradox, because if you look at the economic outlook um, in France, it is actually very good. I mean, everybody agrees to say that um, the government has been pretty good at handling the, the COVID crisis, protecting um, uh, most categories of people. We see that the unemployment is at its lowest. Uh, the growth rate for this year is uh, above 6 percent. But still... Um, uh, you know, there is a sense of a fear. And, uh, um, well, there are many, many things. And, uh, um, and Zemmour, of course, is, is, is capitalizing on this fear about identity of France. You know, France used to be 
a powerful country and, uh, with international uh, influence. And um, even, for instance, the recent um, uh, controversy or, or about, you know, the, the submarines where the French uh, lost, uh, you know, this uh, uh, big business um, um, and, and shows that uh, there is a feeling of uh, uh, losing ground, losing international influence, and of course, this feeling of a sort of an overwhelming uh, uh, immigration and a sense of losing um, the sense of identity. Yeah. That, of course, you know, this, uh, this um, uh, wording about the great placement, we would discuss that later well, on. Yeah, yeah, well, th that'll uh, be uh, one of the things, as you say, that we come to. But I want to, since you bring it up, uh, if you're talking about alien I alienation, I'm going to play this little bit from Eric Zemmour himself. I think that France is in danger of death because its people are in danger of being replaced by another people. Its civilization is in danger of being replaced by another civilization. You know, laws of demography are inexorable. If we don't fight them, we must submit to them. Demography is destiny, as the Americans say, and we must never forget that. So, Nabila, Jean-Christophe was talking there about a paradox, but this man himself is a walking, talking paradox. He, he blames um, Africans, he blames Arabs for a lot of France's problems. And yet at the same time, even though he's of Jewish descent, he praises Marshal Patton, uh, the head of the Vichy regime in France, who deported hundreds of thousands of Jews from that country to, to, their, to their deaths. What sort of character is he? Well, to put it very bluntly, uh, Eric Zemmour represents an extremely frightening side of French uh, politics. He's unashamedly racist, he's sexist, and he's liable to provoke uh, very large numbers uh, of people to similar uh, bigotry. Uh, he personifies uh, the pseudo-authority of fascism. He's a pseudo-intellectual. I actually would call him a pop philosopher. He even is a pseudo-statesman. Um, and at the moment, he's fooling millions uh, of very impressionable people at a time when French politics is moving further and further uh, to the Does right. Does this sound like somebody across the Atlantic only f four or five years ago? Well, absolutely. I think Zemmour is just like Donald Trump. He is in that he comes from nowhere. Uh, he has a great deal of appeal uh, to an almost nihilistic type of voter who thinks that the whole system is broken and that it needs replacing with a strong man. And Zemmour is first and foremost a journalist. Uh, he's somebody who communicates very slickly. And he's, uh, again, a pop philosopher who uh, is paid to appear on prime time slots. And he uses this base to appeal to millions of voters and, and viewers and indeed voters. And I would say that the thrust of his hateful argument is that traditional uh, French um, culture is being swamped by Arabs and indeed Africans who are breeding uh, too quickly. And he lumps most of his perceived uh, enemies under the umbrella of Islam. Yeah. And he wants what he considers uh, to be uh, migrants so, so can to, I, can to I, can abandon I, can their religion and, and culture and to become properly French. Let me bring Joseph in, sat very patiently. Um, we talk about alienation in the United States that saw Donald Trump brought to power, make America great again. And a similar sort of thing perhaps is happening mm. in, in France. Why? Well, this is interesting because I do think it's easy to underestimate the, the economic battle that's going on here, right? There is stuff about identity, but Zemmour himself does have opinions about the economy. He's an anti-globalist. He's an anti-EU figure. He believes very much more in a protectionist type trade, trade strategy which is juxtaposed with Macron, who's all about Europe and, and a bit more outward looking. So he does have this kind of economic, uh, materialist kind of outlook, right? And there is definitely that question, even though the economy is growing in France, the question is, what, what, what is it about the quality of jobs that people are getting that might frustrate individuals in France, right? Individuals with degrees who end up working in supermarkets, individuals with PhDs who can't get um, certain kinds of jobs. And this is something that's really important, I think, in France, this sense that OK, so economically, things may look good, but the quality of employment, the growing inequality in society, uh, people not being able to fulfil their expectations materially is something that's quite difficult. Does that give him a real hold over those people? Or is he just a, a, a short-term sensation, a, a passing phenomenon? Well, the, the problem is, basically, we've seen the, the massive dealignment of the French party system, that the, the French socialists, um, led by the current mayor of Paris, really, as, as their key kind of bright hope for the future, have become 
gentrified, a bit like Labour in the UK. They're concerned with green issues, stuff that doesn't reach their traditional core voter base. So you don't have really a figure that can appeal to those that feel like they're being left behind. OK, I'm going to bring Jean-Christophe back in here, but as you know, anybody can say anything any anytime they want. Jean-Christophe, when, when you see Eric Zamour's face and, and take away the, um, the situation that you've all described here about how France is sort of facing an identity crisis, what is it about him personally that seems to be attracting people? Is it that he can shout louder than anybody else because he has a television platform, he appears in newspapers all the time? Are we, in fact, making the problem worse by talking about him here today? Nabila just said, and I agree with her, that uh, he's uh, sort of a, a French version uh, of a Donald Trump. But I would say that he's even more dangerous because he has a sense of uh, history and intellectual perspective. Mm. Um, that he's also very good or agile at manipulating uh, facts and history. And uh, so um, I think he, he, in that respect, he's extremely uh, dangerous. Uh, but it could also happen that very quickly people realize that he has no economic perspective, no economic vision, um, and that um, uh, just saying that he's again uh, a free trade and, uh, and global perspective is probably not enough. Um, so for now, uh, there is some sort of a pre-campaign and um, he's coming at the right time. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure that when we will really enter uh, mm. the real uh, presidential election uh, uh, campaign, it will be uh, still at this level. OK, I I'm going to read something now from a French comedian, Yacine Bellata, which goes back to the very heart of the, the question I, I put just then to, to Jean-Christophe. Are we fueling the fire or is there, in fact, a genuine following for somebody like Zemmour? Uh, this is what Bellata had to say. On French TV, the more you broadcast someone, the more popular mm. they are. French Muslims very worried that Eric Zemmour says these things on TV without being challenged, without journalistic work, to disassociate the madness of jihadists from the majority of Muslims. He is a provocateur. Uh, this feels like a historic moment where we've never felt so much racism. It's dangerous times, aren't it? It is very dangerous times. And I have to say, I've seen uh, Eric Zemmour a number of times in Paris. I've bumped into him when he was out and about. And he does conform to the image of a rather weedy, uh, dangerous fascist who is constantly surrounded by um, men who are much stronger than her, uh, than him, sorry, and, and look much more physically uh, intimidating than him. And if it, this sounds like a cliche, it's because it's very much, he's, he's a walking cliche. And I think the French political system allows somebody like him, a novelty racist, if you like, to win through to the second round. I don't think he has any chance to become president of France, but he could technically win through to the second which, round. Which might polarise France even more, because well, this is where I'm eventually, because... eventually leading. Because I want to know why it is that he's been able to overtake uh, Marine Le Pen. Is that because she brought her organisation much more to the centre to try and make it have broader appeal? And in fact, that has backfired on her by seeing the extreme yeah. support go go to Zamor. I'm just going to bring in Joseph. If mm. I know no, for, for sure. Her, her, I mean, her, her efforts at rebranding. I mean, after her meltdown in the debates against Macron in the previous election, she rebranded her party. She tried to rename it. For me, she's lost. She's she's losing that kind of credibility. Also, she's still she's still tarnished by the legacy of her father, who is very overtly an anti-Semite and fascist. One of the cards that Zamor can play and does play is that ability of someone from a Jewish background, it, it being very difficult to label him in the same way as a simple anti-Semite and fascist like Marine Le Pen's father, right? So, he, so none he, of this dirt about supporting Pétain and the Vichy regime, which sent Jews to their deaths, none of that has stuck with him? Well, the thing is, the thing is he, he, he about anti-Semitism, he blames it on North African immigration, right? He's got a very tenuous um, relationship with the truth there. But that is a view that's popular in France. That is a view that's in the press all the time. That France doesn't have a history of anti-Semitism, which it does. And it's something that today only exists because of migration from Muslim countries, which is totally false. Right? So he's on, it's not his ideas necessarily. He's kind of on track with a broader mm. current in, in French discourse. Jean-Christophe uh, and the Bieler as well. I don't know which one of you wants to get to the starting line to answer this question first. How do you stop somebody like this? Or how do you stop an, stop an idea like this? 
Well, what I want to uh, actually um, uh, explain is that uh, Eric Zemmour is not just tapping into the far right uh, voters. France can be a very confusing place indeed. And, uh, you know, where some of the most reactionary small c conservatives are found, uh, on the French left, actually. And it's, I would call it, it certainly is reactionary extremism or more specifically populist uh, extremism. And it's uh, the view that the people, the majority of people, are being betrayed by a very comfortable elite uh, of big business who are supported by the Paris political uh, establishment. And meanwhile, they portray Western society as being especially threatened by an influx of immigrants from the third world. And the, lo the flawed logic is that by consequence, then the West becomes like the third world, which couldn't be further from the truth, because as we know, and as evidence shows, the vast majority of people who come from impoverished countries, they, they integrate very well and they mm. just want a nice life like anybody else. So, so, so do you mind if I bring mm -hmm. Jean-Christophe in here? Um, the question originally was, and thank you for that context, uh, Nabila, the question was, how do you stop an idea like this gaining even more traction? Uh, let me also respond to your question before, when you ask why is it that uh, Le Pen is suddenly collapsing um, and how to explain the Zemmour surge and, uh, and phenomenon. I think uh, there is one element of response, which is uh, that the people who have been supporting and voting for Le Pen for decades, and when I say Le Pen, it's the father, it's the daughter, it's the, the niece, etc., etc. They have got now this absolute conviction that there is no hope with her uh, or with the Le Pen clan. And just get back six months back, uh, we had a regional and local election in France where uh, just two weeks before the election, all the polls shows that uh, maybe one third or half of the uh, region or local authorities in France would be uh, 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 on the Le Pen side. And at the end of the day, they got zero uh, because they were unable during the two uh, rounds, you know, to build coalition and to find support. So the people are totally, the, the supporters of Le Pen are totally disillusioned and they are now looking for someone who may actually bring, and in that respect, the move is yeah. eventually different. Well, well, sorry, sorry to interrupt, because... but time is a, a very difficult factor for us here. The, the, the question yeah. has to be, and this is for all of you to consider, but you uh, first, Jean-Christophe, is if the Pen supporters are looking for a new home, they may well have found it in Eric Zamor, but there's a polarisation of society which you probably consider to be insidious, how do you stop an idea like that gaining even more traction as we head towards the presidential elections? Well, you know, the, as I just said before, the, the campaign has not started. So for now, he has about 90% of the sort of the monopole uh, of the discussion in the media. I sort of believe and, and hope that uh, once the campaign will start and once, uh, for instance, uh, either President Macron uh, will be officially uh, entering in the campaign trail, um, then, you know, the debate will shift to uh, economic accomplishments, uh, international development, mm -hmm. uh, international, uh, 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 develop, you know, we have the, the French will have the EU presidency uh, next year and Macron is coming up uh, with a plan. And I'm not a supporter specifically of Macron, but just to say that he has a plan and, and, and he will be coming up with a European perspective uh, that hopefully will be strong enough uh, to show that the, 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 the Zemmour vision uh, for now, uh, which is just limited in terms of international affairs, to withdraw from NATO and uh, to support uh, Poland and other countries in their... Uh, yes, yeah, so, such as Hungary. I, I, suppose, I suppose one of the things I'm trying to get at, Joseph, and sorry to cut you off there, Jean-Christophe, is um, sure. if none of you really believe that he can become president of France in less than one year's time, well, it's only six months' time, first round of the election, if none of you really believe that, then the bigger question is how do you stop 
France continuing to want to support somebody like him or somebody else who will replace him, um, who might drag the country even further to the right. What has France got to do to get rid of this cycle? Well, the thing is, the French state is locked in um, a pattern of, of what I call negative multiculturalism, right? So you can't talk about race or religion when it's a positive thing, right? So in the French armed forces, you've got tens of thousands of Muslim soldiers, tens of thousands of Jewish soldiers, so which demonstrates the country's fairly well integrated, right? You can't say that, but you can say Islam's dangerous and we need to ban certain kinds of female dress. And this is a cycle, unfortunately, the state and then thus the society is caught in. However, to me, the positive side of it is there doesn't seem to be on the demand side a huge amount of support for these figures, right? So Zamora is polling maybe 14, 15 percent. I mean, it's not it's not huge. It's not that, like he's polling anything. Yeah, 17, 18 was the latest figure that mm. I that I got. And that if he then got through yeah. to the second uh, round, he might get 45 yeah. for Macron, but, but 55. The thing, but the thing is, we're in a very specific moment where the left has really collapsed, right? The left is refusing to talk about insecurity. The left is refusing to talk about rising crime. So there's there's a specific vacuum at the moment that's giving someone like him that opportunity. And I don't think that vacuum is going to be there forever. Don't forget that five, six years ago, there was a, a young Frenchman who, who had no party, no real political experience, in the same vein that uh, Zamour hasn't. And his name was Emmanuel Macron. He then founded the En Marche Party uh, and is now president of France. It's not possible to write him off because he doesn't have experience or any particular direction, is it? No, but it's possible to write him off because he represents uh, an extremist uh, like Zemmour is really in it, mainly for the publicity. Macron came in at a time when the uh, political, traditional political parties were collapsing. The left was just uh, disintegrating and the right, the mainstream Gaullist party was imploding. Uh, it was, you know, full of scandals and corruption. We've seen how uh, Nicolas Sarkozy and his prime minister, François Fillon, embody that absolutely you know, um, um, the, the scandal and corruption that still, you know, is very much uh, attached to the, to the Gaullist party. And I have to say that what Eric Zemmour is doing is exploiting what is a massively divided political, uh, uh, political uh, system in France, uh, which spreads the votes across a huge number of candidates. And one of the reasons he's faring relatively well, it's because of the quality of those being attracted into political careers mm. in France and in the West, it has to say in Western democracy mm. in general, it's a very low quality of candidates and consequently very weak candidates can appear very popular so, indeed. So, so as we come to round off the programme, I think we've probably got about a minute and a half left, would any one of you bet your lives, your fortunes, your, your children's health on the fact that he cannot possibly, this racist, this bigot, uh, he cannot possibly become... French president. Jean-Christophe first, then no, no, it's got to be fairly quick fire. What do you think? Would you put your life on it? I would not put my life on that. Definitely not. But uh, I think it is very unlikely. Um, and once again, I think you know, the, it shows that, to respond to your question before, that there is an urgent need in this country to come up with a vision that is combining the global perspective or the international uh, or open neck of this country and the tradition and, and, and identity and to try to find an harmonious combination. Because for now, the people are split in two tribes that are polarized again, once against the other. Joseph, w uh, would you put everything you hold dear on betting that this man cannot possibly become leader of... Uh, La République. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a, a traditional Yorkshire expression, which is there's nothing as strange as people. So, no, I wouldn't bet on it. But now it's daft as folk. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, so, so, so with elections, you never know. But I think it's highly unlikely. OK. And is there... Well, you give me your answer to that one, and then I'll ask, is there no one in French politics that could possibly recenter the country? Sorry, Well, Nabila. it's highly unlikely because another fault of the two-round election system in France is that otherwise responsible voters uh, can use the first round to let off steam while knowing that they won't cause serious damage. And so they vote for the far right in round one or extremists in the round one. 
Having made that point, they go and back a more moderate candidate. And of course, extremists like Zemmour exploit sure, that. Sure, 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 sure. But I but, think that. But would you put your house on it, your life, your, your everything you hold dear on the fact that this man could not possibly? Yes, because we've seen that happening before, as early as 2002 with Jean Marie Le Pen, a convicted racist and anti Semite who won easily through round two, and his daughter, okay. Marine Le Pen, in 2017. But I think actually the most interesting aspect of this particular election is that we are likely to see a second term for the first time, Jacques Chirac, in the person of Emmanuel Macron, a centrist, moderate candidate. If only I had thought to ask that question at the very beginning of the programme, <laughs> rather than have you have to bring it up at the very end of the programme. But I'm so glad you did listen. Thank you very much, Nabila Joseph. Great to see you again. And Jean-Christophe, great to hear your thoughts. Thanks for coming on. I suppose what we've learned in this programme and listening to our contributors here is that uh, very little does seem to change in French politics over the last 15 to 20 years. Well, we will see next year. Uh, that's it. That's all we've got time for. From me, David Foster, from the Roundtable team, we thank you very much for your company. I thank my guests for coming in. Good to see people back at the table again after all this time. And we hope to have your company wherever you are next time. Until then, bye-bye.